All right, Paul, you've done the mathematics. You've shown us how pi can change as we change k mathematically. But I'm someone who likes to get my head around things by, by visualizing things. Now, the problem I have is we're dealing with a universe which has got three dimensions plus time. So it's four dimensions. And I can't visualize four dimensions. But it strikes me that maybe we can get rid of one of those dimensions, or maybe even two of them. Yes, so one way to think about the strange geometry um, is to imagine that our three-dimensional universe is actually curved in a fourth dimension. That's the three spatial dimensions. Uh, three dimensions x, y, and z are curved in a fourth dimension. You don't need this. It could just be totally no fourth dimension at all. You just change the metric. But this is something that's very helpful. But of course, as you say, thinking in four dimensions makes your brain dribble out of your ears. Um, so a very common analogy is to imagine a two-dimensional universe, a surface, and traditionally the inhabitants of this two-dimensional universe are called bugs, and they live on the surface, and we can imagine that curved in the third dimension. And this gives us a sort of, sort of okay analogy to these different values of k. So it's not really dissimilar from being on the surface of the Earth and us being in the bugs. Yes. Right. But of course, we, we tend to think about, we can dig into the Earth or go out into space, but you've got to imagine this is all the dimensions yeah. you have, so that's not really an option for them. So if you think about the k greater than zero, in this yep. case pi is less than 3.141592, etc., then that's actually an analogy of a sphere. Okay. So how do you measure pi on a sphere? Well, let's imagine you put a flag in the middle and send your uh, trained bugs out a given distance r in each direction, and they would then yep. give you a circle, and you can go around the circumference, and you can see that circumference is going to be less than pi times the diameter. So the analogy that I would use on Earth for us Earth-bound dwellers is imagine going most conveniently to the North Pole or the South Pole and then sending your, your, your flags down to the equator and then you go through and you figure out the circumference relative to how far you went down and it's, it's not flat, it's been bent in, so that circumference is less than it should be. Or even more so, you could start at the North Pole and march all the way to the South Pole. Ooh, in that yeah. case, the circumference is zero. Um, but you've gone all the way from the north to the south pole, so your radius is quite large, but there's zero circumference. Yes, okay. So that all makes sense. So that, this is one possibility for our universe. So a k greater than zero universe is an analogy of a sphere. And that has a number of possibilities. One, as we've seen, is that pi is going to be smaller than you'd expect. Yep. On small scales, you do a circle in your room, it's not going to be much different. But as you get bigger and bigger, so your radius is comparable to the radius of the universe, pi gets very seriously suppressed. Right. A second possibility would be that parallel lines would actually meet. Wow. So that means that if I'm, for example, on the equator of the Earth or the equator of the sphere, and I start heading towards the pole, the lines meet. And in this case, they actually meet at the pole. And that's despite there being 90 degrees, 90 degrees, so that's 180 degrees, Plus, I got another angle up there. So I have more than 180 degrees in a triangle. Yes, so parallel lines will meet in a universe like this. Of course, we're not really a two-dimensional analog. What this would mean is if you fired two laser beams out at perfect straight line, they would eventually meet. Yeah. On, again, a distant scale equal to the radius of the universe, which is going to be very, very big. You're not going to see this in your laboratory. OK. Uh, t another possibility, of course, in this universe would be if you go far enough in any direction, you'll come back to where you started from. Right, it all wraps around onto itself. So you're really, it's a universe you can't really get out of. You're kind of stuck on it. It's finite, right? Yes. I can go through and add up the surface area of this sphere, and it's finite. Yeah, this always used to bug me as a kid, because I used to read in the cosmology books about how the universe might be finite, and that never made sense to me. How can the universe be finite? Surely it means you go far enough in your spacecraft, you'd see a big brick wall with a sign saying, you know, edge of the universe, do not trespass. Yep. But what's on the other side of the wall, for Pete's sake? This didn't make sense. But this is how you do it. What's actually going on is if you go far enough, so I fly my spacecraft in that direction, eventually I'd come back and hit myself in the back. Right. So I've in our own universe, this would be the same. We could head out that way. And then given enough time, you might end up where you started, given a universe that had this shape. Yes, I always think this is something that should be used in a science fiction movie, that this would be the ultimate prison to put you know, some superhero, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger or something like that. If you had a universe, say, a radius of a few meters, size of a room, but it was curved like itself, and just imagine your hero trying to get his way out. He could shoot his gun one direction, the bullets will hit him in the back, he can use a pickaxe on the floor and the debris will fall down on his head. 
There's nothing that he can destroy to get out of this universe. It would be a perfect prison, no possible escape. Mm, okay. But this isn't the only type of universe. No, so that's a k greater than zero. If we go k less than zero, we have a rather more complicated shape, which is often called a saddle shape. So here I'm showing a little animation of one of these shapes. And so this is the shape made out of hyperbolas for those who remember their geometry. Yep. So in this case, once again, you have a point and send your bugs out in every direction, you define a circle. Mm -hmm. And now the circle is going to be wavy, go up and down. So it's part, the circumference is going to be more than 2 pi times the radius. Right. So that means that, uh, yeah, the, to do, um, dot all the little radial things, you got to travel further than 2 pi. And so this, again, would be a universe which is very different than what we're used to dealing with in our rooms and our uh, pieces of paper that we draw these circles on normally. Yeah, and if you look at parallel lines, in this case, they'll actually diverge. <coughs> and so if we think about this, if we want to measure a triangle here, the angles of the triangle are going to add up to less than 180 degrees. Yes, once again, you'll only find these differences on scales of equal to the radius of curvature of the universe, which is going to be very, very big. You're not going to... That's not why the triangles you draw in primary school geometry don't add up to 180 degrees. That's got a quite different explanation. And we should say that this one has an edge, and that's just because we have a finite screen. But this universe keeps going on. It doesn't just end right here. It goes on forever. So if I try to measure how many square meters there is on this saddle, it turns out the answer is infinite. It goes on forever. It just keeps on going on bigger and bigger in both directions. Okay, so we've got k greater than zero. We've got a finite universe uh, with angles add up to more than 180 degrees where pi is small and parallel lines converge. And we've got the k less than zero universe, in which case parallel lines, if you fire two laser beams, they'll get further apart, even though they're traveling in straight lines. And this universe is infinite. If you get k exactly equal to zero, then we're in a case of just a normal universe. It becomes the same metric we're used to in a conventional universe. It's That's just like a grid. A little, looks yeah. like a little big uh, cube, bunch of cubes put together, right? But is that the only way you can do it? There's no exceptions to that rule? Well, I suppose you could uh, muck things up a bit, something like this. So what have you done here? Ah, oh, yes, well, I've been evil here. What I've done is I've taken a flat universe and wrapped it round on itself. So it's a cylinder. So that it means should be it cylinder sort of goes forever. on forever that way? Oh, I see. It just goes on and on. Okay. Yes, I've only drawn a bit of it because we've <coughs> having an infinite screen here. In this case, it's a flat universe because you try and measure pi here. It's basically the same as on a flat piece of paper. Yep. The only difference being in one axis, you'd come back to where you started. And you can do a whole bunch of things like this. So you could take any of the universes we've talked about, the spherical universe, the saddle-shaped universe, or the flat universe, and you can do strange things to the topology and stick them back on in various ways. And so there are more possibilities, but each of these things is in terms of pi and all the geometry you can measure locally is one of these three families. Okay, very good. So that's told us about k, and k gives us this geometry, closed, open, or flat. But we and haven't talked about a of t yet. Yeah, that, that multipl multiplicative factor out in front. So I guess we're going to have to figure out where we would get a of t, because it doesn't seem to be geometry in the same way. It seems to be more of what the universe does over time. Yes, yeah, so this is going to be motion, kinematics, and we'll show you how that's derived in the next video.